You may have heard in the news recently that bacon has been officially classified as a carcinogen. But this news that processed pigs can cause cancer shouldn't come as all that surprising if you've been paying attention to humanity's track record of discovering deadly substances too late. Namely, after everybody has already been exposed. Allow me to explain. First up is mercury, an elemental metal that is liquid at room temperature and is almost as cool looking as it is dangerous. Historically, it was used in making high quality felt hats, which were once the trendiest of trends. Unfortunately, being exposed to the mercuric compounds over the course of many years often led to mad hatter disease, which included tremors, slurred speech, and other neurological damage. Mercury was also once commonly found in thermometers, doorbells, and sometimes just sitting in a bucket in the garage. And, bad news, liquid mercury is extremely fun to play with. So, whenever a thermometer broke, or sometimes when a teacher would bring some into the classroom for educational fun time, children would handle it with about the same precautions they take around Play-Doh, as in they would roll it around in their hands and sometimes even eat it. Strangely, it isn't the act of touching or even eating the elemental mercury that was most dangerous. Instead, the real trouble arose in one of two ways. One is when mercury is allowed to evaporate, and you get the vapors in your lungs. In order for this to cause real problems, you must be exposed for a great length of time in a poorly ventilated environment. The other danger is exposure to mercuric compounds like methylmercury. These are thousands of times more dangerous than straight up elemental mercury, and a single drop can sometimes kill. Fortunately, these are usually confined to a laboratory setting, but they do show up in seafood, which is why it isn't recommended that you have more than one serving of large fish, such as tuna, within a week. Number two is lead, which has been involved in an outrageous number of accidental poisonings across history. Ancient Rome especially had a problem with lead, namely lining their pots, jugs, plumbing, and aqueducts with it. If you've never tasted boiled lead, and I hope you haven't, then you wouldn't know that it actually has a sweet taste. Romans considered the flavor a natural enhancement to boiled fruit syrup and wine, two dishes consumed gluttonously at the time. Some historians consider lead poisoning's neurotoxic effects, including seizures, damaged intelligence, and bizarre behavior changes, to be a contributing factor to the downfall of the Roman Empire. Crazier still, many historians believe the Romans were well aware of the risks, but used sweet, sweet lead anyway. More recently, lead was a major additive in paint, found pretty much everywhere in the early 20th century, on household surfaces and objects where children could frequently ingest it, because again, it tastes sweet. As early as 1892, this childhood lead poisoning epidemic was being studied. However, thanks to powerful lobbyists, it wasn't until the 1970s that proper bans were put into place to protect children. The lead lobbyists liked to play a game where they would try to put the blame on the parents for not disciplining their children enough to keep them from putting things in their mouths. But if you've ever met a baby, you know that that is a struggle that cannot be won. And speaking of paint, there seems to be a trend in history of making paint out of really hazardous substances. Number three is radium, specifically radium paint, which was used primarily to make glow-in-the-dark watch faces and things like creeptacular doll eyes. These painted items were prepared in a factory setting, where young women, sometimes teenagers, were paid a good wage in order to carefully paint these consumer goods. These women are known today as the Radium Girls, and their case is famous for what happened in the years following working at the factory. See, in order to maintain a fine tip on their paintbrushes, the Radium Girls were encouraged to put the tip of the brush into their mouths, using their lips and tongues to keep the delicate shape. The girls, assuming that the company wouldn't have that policy if the paint wasn't safe, also used their free time to paint their nails and teeth with the stuff for fun. Meanwhile, the company chemists who prepared the paint wore radioactivity safety equipment. Big Radium knew about the dangers, but decided not to tell the factory workers. Fast forward a few years, and the girls began losing teeth. And jawbones. And then the ability to walk without their skeleton shattering. It took years of lawsuits against powerful lobbyists and corporations, but eventually the Radium Girls won a small amount of money and died young. There really isn't a happy ending here, so let's move on. Number four is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, better known as DDT, which you might recognize as the pesticide that used to be sprayed on basically everything to prevent crop pests and mosquitoes. It worked really well, and it was relatively cheap. It seemed like a miracle at the time, and the discoverer won a Nobel Prize. 
There were concerns, though, from the beginning that DDT was dangerous, and so an advertising campaign was created to show how wonderful, safe, and fun DDT was. The print ads, like these, focused on the benefits of use. Videos were also created, emphasizing harmlessness. Here we see it being sprayed on picnicking children, and here it is being applied to a pool full of kids. Relieved, parents let their children run through the spray when the neighborhood DDT man came around. If you're under the impression that things took a turn for the horrible, you'd be correct! But yeah, turns out that the chemical that was really good at killing insects was also really good at killing other things, like fish and raptors. No, raptors, like eagles and falcons. Specifically, it caused their offspring, in the form of eggs, to have thin shells. When a mother bird went to sit on her egg, it would break beneath her. We also discovered too late that the human reproductive system was also being compromised. DDT is still sometimes used in extreme cases of mosquito control, but we try not to spray it directly into children's mouths anymore. And finally, number five is arsenic, specifically arsenic paint. See what I mean? It was used in a very fashionable shade of green, commonly called Shields Green or Paris Green, which was used extensively to make dresses, artificial flowers, children's toys such as crayons, and wallpaper. The wallpaper part was especially problematic because when it got damp, a chemical reaction with the resulting mold would take place, releasing deadly gas into the air with a faint smell of garlic. Mothers and doctors frequently told tales of young children killed by invisible fumes leaking from the walls themselves. Interestingly, this wallpaper problem may have contributed to the death of Napoleon. The house where he lived on the island he was exiled to after being kicked out of France for the second time had many rooms covered in this toxic wallpaper. One such room was the bathroom where Napoleon took extended baths, providing plenty of moisture for the wallpaper and exposure time for Napoleon. Analysis of his hair post-mortem show very high concentrations of arsenic. His officially recorded cause of death was stomach cancer, but arsenic paint may have certainly played a part. The moral of the story is never lick anything. Thanks for watching this episode of Art Explains. Be sure to click the like and subscribe buttons before heading off so you can be sure to know when the next video goes up. See you next time!